I've always been a fan of Colourful, as their iGame series are usually strong performing cards and have unique designs that make them stand out a little more from the competition. And their new cards are no exception, with their Ultra lineup coming in both double and triple fan configurations for both the NVIDIA RTX 4060 and the RTX 4060 Ti. On top of that, this is a factory overclock model, meaning it will boost to 2,580 MHz, so it should run a little faster, while alongside that, the big cooler should make light work for this more modest GPU core. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hello mate, you all right? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just got to put it together. It's going to be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature packed motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> You, you realise that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits. Or, if you're wanting that all-important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver. Thanks, but... Where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> and you call me the stupid one. Now, as I've mentioned before, and without going too in depth, the RTX 4060 is the most affordable GPU in the RTX 4000 series so far. And while it doesn't offer enough of a upgrade path from a 20 or 30 series card, those on the older 10 series cards are the ones that are likely to benefit the most. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the card that we have here today. First and foremost, this is one seriously kick-ass looking card, of which when it arrived into the offices, we simply fell in love with it due to its unique aesthetics, which features one of those holographic stickers, kind of like when you find a shiny in a pack of Pokemon stickers or whatever kids collect these days. So it changes from blues through reds and purples as you kind of move it around in the light. It just simply looks awesome. It has some great looking fans too, with all three of them clocking in at 90 millimeters, featuring 11 fins and a ring that joins the fins together to better direct the airflow through the heatsink. So a pretty beefy setup for an RTX 4060, which should help move some serious air and consequently heat away from the card. Now the shroud looks fantastic and while it is plastic, there are so many unique patterns and panels on it that kind of really grabs your attention. I normally like a more, let's say, understated look for my graphics cards, but I have to admit, this one is just really unique and interesting, and I love it. The fact that the bulk of the card is white is just a bonus too, and something I'd love to see more from brands as we kind of move forward. White has kind of, I don't know, been forgotten about, but it seems to be making a comeback. Now, down the sides of the card, you'll find a large ventilation strip where you can see the exposed heatsink fins, and this should allow air and heat to easily escape the card. However, keeping with the loud and, let's say, in-your-face design, there's a huge GeForce RTX logo and the words Ultra on the outward-facing side, which is going to be a little bit subjective, I will admit. Some people may like it and, well, some people may not. So that's kind of going to dictate whether you buy this or not, really. There's also an embossed logo at the back that reads Ultra, break the routine, beyond imagination. And yeah, it sounds a bit gimmicky, but honestly, I'm surprised it isn't in neon pink or something to match the rest of the design. And I don't know, it kind of feels a little bit understated, but with words like that, it kind of makes sense. Now the backplate, however, is not understated and looks stunning with a really cool graphic design and one of the most interesting airflow vent designs I've ever seen. However, I'm gonna be honest, I do wonder if it is actually restricting airflow as the openings are, well, not exactly big, but I doubt cooling will be an issue regardless given the size of the GPU core and the overall size of the cooler. I mean, for a 4060, this is pretty damn huge. On the IO, there's a single HDMI and three display ports, which are clearly labeled with embossed logos above each of them, along with an easy to reach turbo button, which I'm gonna be honest, is actually pretty handy and much easier than a switch on top of the card, because then you'd have to take the side off your case, get to it, flick it, put it back on, turn the computer on. This is just, well, easier. The card is easy enough to disassemble with the one piece metal backplate being fully removable along with the plastic shroud, which is also a single piece which can be unplugged and removed. There's a single connector for each individual fan. Now each of the fans are screwed into some metal supports that kind of act a bit like an exoskeleton to the heatsink, ensuring that the card stays nice and rigid. 
The heatsink is made up of two parts with a dense area above the PCB and then a huge extension on the back that is fed by two large heat pipes running the length of both chunks of metal. Now the PCB is, considering the size of the card, actually very very small, but nothing out of the ordinary based on what we've seen from other 4060 based cards. It features, typically, four SK Hynix 2GB GDDR6 VRAM ICs, totaling 8GB. And while there is room for more, it's likely never going to happen and instead is reserved for the 4060 Ti 16GB instead, a card that is coming very, very soon. Now in terms of power delivery, as expected, we have a 4 plus 1 power phase setup with four phases for the GPU using the UBIQ MOSFETs and a single phase for the memory. The GPU is controlled by the RT8845A multi-phase PWM controller from RichTech, while the memory seems to be under a buck controller of some kind that is likely similar to the 7212 controller that we've seen on similar cards. So design aside, let's see how the card performs against other 4060s that we've already looked at. So starting things off with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and it's here that the iGame puts out a respectable 96 FPS at 1080p on the Ultra preset, putting it right between the NO3D and the Gigabyte cards, 95 and 97 FPS. They're also kind of ridiculously close, so I doubt you could tell them apart from gameplay. Weirdly though, as the average FPS goes up one FPS from card to card, the 1% lows go down one FPS. There's a little more variation in Cyberpunk with a 2 FPS difference, but so far the Inno 3D card is still the fastest of the bunch, but the iGame is certainly holding on strong at 82 FPS. In Death Stranding, it's the same story with the Inno 3D card holding a strong 155 FPS lead and the iGame coming in at 150 FPS with a 131 FPS 1% 1 low. Then lastly, in Watch Dogs Legion, the iGame pulled ahead, though only by 1 FPS when compared to the MSRP-based Inno 3D card. Honestly though, they're so close I feel that if I benchmark them again tomorrow, the RTX 4060s would all change places on the chart. So the card performed where we expected to a degree, though I was expecting a little more due to its clock speed and the size of the cooler, but that's generally where cards see a big difference, in the cooling. To put that to the test, we ran the card in an hour long F122 test, and here we see the colorful card sat at a steady GPU temperature of 54 degrees, while the hotspot saw the temp rise to 66 degrees, which in comparison to Inno 3D's 85 degrees is, well, pretty damn impressive. While it was cool, the fan speed also came in the quietest of the 4060s we have here in the office with an RPM of 1456, all while consuming around 120 watts of power. Okay, so let's break this down. This is certainly one of the most striking looking RTX 4060 cards hitting the market today. I must admit, I was really looking forward to the Zotac Spider-Man one, but was sorely let down by the fact it was basically just, well, a black GPU in a fancy looking box. That's not the case with the colourful RTX 4060 iGame Ultra Graphics card, as this one comes in a very nice box and has a truly very shiny graphics card within. It's kind of got that shimmer and colour change to it, just, you know, as you look at it from different angles. And I don't know, just I, I find myself constantly looking at it and it just kind of makes me smile like a 10 year old. Now, the colourful RTX 4060 iGame Ultra isn't just a fantastic bit of shiny sticker though, as the whole graphics card looks like it's been designed to grab your attention. I mean, the backplate looks absolutely stunning with its bright pink decal over a white backplate. The word Ultra looks like it's bursting off the side of the card, and the shroud is a mixture of materials and a chrome strip that just manages to look both sleek and visually loud at the same time, which, I'll be honest, is probably actually pretty hard to do if you are designing the graphics card. Now if that's not enough, there's a huge heatsink with a triple fan configuration with those large fans coming with an 11 blade design and axial trim that kind of further pushes air down into the card rather than out to the side. Everything is tuned to just be, I don't know, a little bit better. No doubt why they called this one the Ultra. Now when it comes to performance, it's still the same humble RTX 4060 GPU underneath. And while the big cooler and the factory overclock do give it let's say a nice performance bump over a reference card, it's fairly small. Now for the most part, rival cards have their own custom coolers and OC profiles too. So what I'm trying to say is they're all very competitive on performance, but what gives colorful an edge is that it runs cool and quiet and it also looks fantastic. Now being honest, this is probably my favorite RTX 4060 for a multitude of reasons. So what I'm trying to say is if you're in the market for a 4060 and you want something that stands out in the design department, along with having fantastic cooling performance, well, then this is really the one to buy. And there we have it. 
What do you think? Will this be an upgrade to replace your GTX 1060? Or are you rocking something newer and, well, you know, the upgrade path just doesn't warrant the change? Let us know in the comments section below. And that about wraps this one up. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully you agree with my sentiments that this is just a fantastic looking card. I get that it's not for everyone, but it is for me. If you did like it, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do and can want to consider supporting us over on Patreon, that's where you'll get access to a ton of exclusive benefits, including behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, access to our testing data, and much, much more. The link for all that great stuff is down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.